Now, what is the correct way to pronounce your stage name? Queen Leora. Leora. A lot of people like to say Leona. It's not Leona. And aside from mispronouncing it, do people misspell it as well? Of course, always. What do you notice people do more? Mispronounce this name of yours or misspell it? Mispronounce. Now, do you accept any abbreviations of this stage name of yours? Queen Lili. People call me Lili my whole life, so sometimes they throw that in there. And do you prefer people call you by your full stage name or this abbreviation? I like Queen Leora. Some people just say Leora, but I'm like, I feel like you disrespected me. Say the queen part. Now, care to share your race, ethnicity, or nationality? I am African American. And what's the main language you speak at this point? English. Do you speak any other languages aside from English? Nope. I wish I did. Be that as it may, ever took a foreign language class in school, perhaps? Spanish. And do you remember what grades back then? What grade I made or what a grade I was in? Grade you were in for Spanish language class. 11th and 12th. So this was high school. For sure. Care to share the name of that school you attended back in those days? I went to Clay Chalkville High School. And what part of the world is that located in? In Birmingham, Alabama. Now, that Spanish language class, is that a requirement or an elective for you back in those days? It's a requ Well, it's an elective that you can choose, but it, it's low-key a requirement. Like, you got to take a foreign language. So foreign language was a requirement, but mm -hmm. the language of your choice right. was up to you. Right. You could either do French or Spanish. I chose Spanish. And what drew you to Spanish? Uh, Spanish is more of a, a universal, like, like everybody speaks Spanish more so than French. And back in those days, did you take that class serious? No, absolutely not. I should have, but I didn't. Why not? Shit, they lost me. They lost me. At first it was cool. Then we started going into some sentences and all that. I just was trying to pass. Now zooming out, mm -hmm. how far did you get with your education? Uh, I dropped out my freshman year of college. And care to share the name of the school and the reason for that decision making? So I went to Clark Atlanta University. Um, I dropped out because I just was tired of people like having money around me and I was so fucking broke. Like, I was calling my mom asking her to cash out me $20, $5, $10. I really just was trying to smoke weed. So I just was broke as hell. And I used to keep seeing people that had so much money. I'm like, what do you do? And they're like, I do hair. So at that moment, I literally packed up my dorm room. Well, not at that moment, but took a little time, packed up my dorm room, didn't tell nobody. And it was a snowstorm in Atlanta and the security guard wouldn't even let me park in front of the door. But that's when I knew that I had to drop out. Like I felt like the devil was trying to put up so many obstacles. I knew that's what I was supposed to do. So I just packed up my car. I didn't tell nobody and I dropped out. Now, did you complete the entire freshman year? So I was in the army. So when I graduated high school, when everybody was starting their freshman year, I was still in training. So I didn't start school until spring semester. So I did spring semester and fall semester to complete my first freshman year, but I didn't go back in the spring to start my sophomore year, if that makes sense. And how far did you get with the U.S. Army? Um, I was in the Army for four years. I was a specialist, a 92 Yankee supply. They wanted me to go to sergeant school. They had signed me up, but I was not going for that. I had to go and get on. My mental health was not up to par for the Army. I had to go. And was that an honorable discharge? Uh, Yes, it wasn't dishonorable. It was just a regular discharge. I had told them a lot was going on in my life. I needed to get out. I couldn't focus, so they let me out. And was that the length of the contract as well, four years? So I had a, I went in in 2015 and I left in 2019. It was a four year contract with the option of a two year extension. So once I completed that four years and I wanted to discharge myself, they kind of let me. They just went ahead and let me go. So you drop out of college, but continue with in a few years in the Army. Correct. Correct. Mm -hmm. I was in hair school. I went to cosmetology school, but I was missing so many hours. Like I was in cosmetology school an extra five months. 
because I kept going to train with the Army. So I told them it was too much. I wanted to focus on my education with hair. And did you end up completing cosmetology school? Yes, I did. And care to share where you attended for that as well? Aveda. I went to Aveda. It's a cosmetology school. Now, let's rewind all the way back. For those in the audience, mm -hmm. getting to know you for the very first time, mm -hmm. care to share where you were born? I was born in New Jersey, but I moved when I was six to Birmingham, Alabama. So I really say I'm from Birmingham because it really don't count. And where in New Jersey were you born exactly? I was born in Elizabeth, but we lived in Jersey City. Then we lived in Roselle, but I'll say Jersey City because that's where my mom and them from. That's where we lived majority of the time, so Jersey City. And what was the reason for the move down to Birmingham for you? My mom's mom, which is my grandma, she always, well, she's from Alabama, so they will always visit. So my mom wanted to come down to the South her whole life, and New Jersey was just getting a little rough, even though Birmingham is the exact same thing. She just thought it would be better to raise me in the South, which I agree. I love the South better than the North, for sure. And do you still reside in Birmingham today? I live in the outskirts of Birmingham, so not technically. I'm about 35 minutes from Birmingham, but yeah, you could say I'm still around. Do you want to put a name on it? No. Now, when it comes to Birmingham, what ages were you raised there exactly for? From six to 23. And is it a particular of Birmingham? East perhaps? side, east side of Birmingham. And that was Six to 23, east side of Birmingham? Yeah, the east side of Birmingham. My mama still stay there. And care to share your current age at this point? I'm 25. And your birthday, while you're at it, the month and the day, perhaps? September 18th, I'm a Virgo. Big Virgo. Now, what was that really like for you, growing up on the east side of Birmingham? It was cool. I love growing up on the east side. Way better than the west side. You feel me? East side just give you a better vibe. And what was the top point for you during your upbringing on the east of Birmingham? What was your highest point or most positive moment growing up for you in that area? I'm gonna say when I first started doing hair on the east side, um, it was just a, it, I just felt the love from the east side, you feel me? Like I had a lot of east side clients pulling up. The east side was just a general point for people. That's when I really felt the most love from the east side. That's when I was like, I love the east side. People be like, well, you, damn, you do hell all the way on the east side, fuck. Or they be like, yeah, I'm from the east side, I stay there, I'll be there in five minutes. It's either they stay five minutes away or they stay fucking 40, so. And what drew you to hair exactly? I told you I was tired of being broke. I was tired of being broke. And I saw that they was charging them $500 for installs and wigs. And I'm like, y'all making that much money? I could do that. I could do a little curl of the bang. I could do that. It's easy. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. what was the bottom point for you during your upbringing on the east side of Birmingham? What was your lowest point or most negative moment growing up in that area for you? I'm not gonna say it was like a negative moment. My my area of the east side that I was raised in, it ain't like no trenches or no shit like that, you feel me? My friends stayed in the trenches. So I'll be with them all day, then I'll go back to my comfortable ass house. So I didn't have no motherfucking hard time. We stayed on the good side of the east side. We went in no trenches. So I had fun. Be that as it may, how were you able to survive that upbringing there? It was easy to survive, shit. I mean, you would hear like the gunshots and shit like that, but I will say growing up in Birmingham, that becomes second nature. Like every single party that I went to, damn near got shot up or somebody got to find. So hearing gunshots or like seeing people find you pulling up, seeing nonsense, shit like that, that was normal. As long as nobody shooting up my motherfucking house, we good. Ain't nobody coming over there to shoot shit up. Now there are some people who, excuse me, there are some people who say things like, don't know if I'll make it to see the age of 18. No, never gave that. I'm not in the motherfucking streets. We lead it for them niggas.
Now, for those in the audience, mm-hmm. getting to know you for the very first time, who are you? I'm Queen Leora. I started off as a hairstylist, and then I retired myself and went into like kind of the instructing field. But really, people know me from TikTok, being an influencer, doing hair. I'm very outspoken, so I really just kind of say what comes to my mind, and people kind of, you know, flock to that. So I can just say like a hair influencer. Now, also for those in the audience getting to know you for the very first time, care to share your screen name on TikTok as well? My screen name on TikTok is Queen Leora. No, it's the Queen Leora. And then on Instagram is Leora's Queendom. A lot of people like to say Queen Dome or stuff like that. It's just like Kingdom, just with a queen. So Leora's Queendom. Any other social media platforms you frequent as well? Uh, Facebook. Um, my name is Leora Bird. I wasn't able to change my name to Queen Leora. It's a couple. It's a lot of fake pages out there, but I do have a blue check, so that should be able to distinguish me from them. Any other platforms? Uh, you can try YouTube, but I'm not frequent on YouTube. But TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook, fuck with me. You're going to find me on there. And what's the channel name on YouTube as well? Uh, Queen Leora. Only fans? Absolutely not. I have no ads. So, the fuck am I going to be on there showing? Now, you mentioned the phrase retirement. Yes. What was the reason for that? So, Actually, I've never wanted to do fucking hair, but I'm going to have my own salon. And I told myself I need to be able to relate to my stylist. I never want to come into a situation telling people what to do. And I have had no experience. I have no clue what they're going through. So I went ahead and went to cosmetology school. You know, I dealt with the taking the test, dealing with the clients on a day-to-day basis. So when I do have my salons, I can relate to my staff and I can really, you know, help them move on to the next level and really make them feel comfortable. So soon as I got to the point where I could retire myself and strictly focus on classes and promoting people's hair brands and stuff like that, that's exactly what I did. I got from behind the chair because I'm the fucking star. I need people to do my shit. I don't need to be sitting there doing other people's hair. That makes sense. And is there a name to this salon? Oh, it's gonna be called Queen Leora. Of course. Now, be that as it may, mm-hmm. what is the biggest misconception of you at this point? That I'm just ghetto as hell. Like, I think a lot of people think I'm like ratchet as fuck. And I'm really not. I'm actually very professional. Um, I'm not ignorant at all. I just have a filthy mouth at times. And sometimes it can convey that. But I definitely know how to handle myself. I know how to conduct myself. People see me out and they just want me to get fucking crazy. They want me to, what are you doing, bitches? And da, da, da. But no, that's, that's just my online personality. Have you lost opportunities because of this misconception? No, actually. And I think that's what turned people kind of on to me because people thought that I would lose. A lot of my brand deals or they thought that I wouldn't get any more promotions because I am so raw, but that's actually what brings them in more. So if I have lost any deals, I wouldn't know, but a lot of companies actually come to me for my rawness. That's what they like about me. Now, this characteristic that you're describing, this rawness, Mm -hmm. is this something you were born with or something you grew into? I grew into it. But I'm, I was born with it, point blank period. I've always been like this. But I had to grow into it with being comfortable to just, you know, not give a fuck what other people say about it. So the older I got, the more I really blossomed into myself. But i always been like this, whether I said it or thunk it. i always fucking been like this. And in your immediate family, yeah, who is the most raw, if not you? She, my dad. My dad, for sure. He's raw as fuck. He gonna tell you exactly what he think, bad or not. Like, he don't give a fuck. It's his way or the highway. So I think my dad kind of set the tone for me, for sure. For sure. He definitely set the tone. Craziest rumor you heard about yourself? 
I'm not gonna lie, like this is the craziest shit. I've never told nobody this because I don't want them to think like it's some truth to this shit. Cause it's really no fucking truth to this. But this showed me that people will really hate you the fuck out. So I was in high school and at this point I was still a virgin, like had no clue about sex. I wasn't even a flirtatious person. And somebody had came up to me and was like, yeah, this girl um told me that these like three dudes just had sex with you like at their house last weekend. And it just was kind of crazy as fuck. It really came from left field. Like me and the girl was fucking friends. So that was the craziest rumor that I've ever heard. Like they just pulled that from their fucking ass. So that one threw me for a fucking loop. I'll never forget that shit. I was walking down the hallway just feelings hurt. People are just spreading rumors like I'm a slut. And I haven't even had sex yet. So that was a crazy ass rumor. Did that rumor get around? Um, That was the only time I heard it. So like from that one person, it never came back to me from anywhere else. So shit, it could have been that fucking person lying just to see what I was going to say. But mm, yeah, it didn't get around. Shit, it just got to me. Got to me though. Now, you mentioned this in a previous portion of questions. But just for this portion, for context, care to share the name of that school you attended when that rumor came about? Clay Charles. They went to Clay Charles and don't mess with Charles. They just say anything. Now, what is your policy on rumors zooming out? Oh, shit. My favorite saying is you could be the juiciest peach on the world. Like, you could be so tasty, so juicy, and it's still going to be a bitch that don't like peaches still going to be a bitch that's going to find something to say about that one peach. So I live by that. At this point, I'm grown as fuck. I could I could care less. At this point, I know people be fucking lying. Then I just was so young and naive, I just couldn't believe that somebody would make some fake-ass shit up like that. But now I know. Just to be a little bit more specific here, there are some that clear them up and address them like you did in this instance. And there's others that sweep rumors under the rug and let people talk. It depends. If you call me broke, bitch, I'm going to clear that the fuck up. That's insane. I done heard that shit a little recently. Like, that's fucking insane. I'll go clear that up. But, you know, people going to fucking talk. Even after you clear up a rumor, people are still going to make something up about what the fuck you just said. So, you damned if you do, damned if you don't. It just depends on how I feel today. Now... In regards to your sexual orientation, mm -hmm. have people questioned that? Uh, mm, um, I mean, I'm straight as fuck. I feel like I give that, but girls gonna try it anyway. Like, if a girl really wants you, she'll try it. So I've had girls approach me, but just shut that down, baby. Strictly dickly. Straight as an arrow boot. Anything else you want to mention about your sexuality or question you weren't asked? People want to know about that specifically. No. Mm -mm. They know what I like. Now, speaking of questions, mm -hmm. is there a question you receive you dislike getting asked? Something you can't stand to answer, perhaps. Maybe it's a repetitive question. Something you receive all the time. Could be from fans yes. or strangers asking you this. Yes, can you do my hair? They steady see me out. Can you please do my hair? I'll pay whatever. Can you please do my hair? I don't do fucking hair no more. And it's like, I really love that people want me to do their hair. Like, I love all of my past clients. I love all of my fans. But I just don't do hair. And people will literally put me in an uncomfortable ass position. I could be out shopping with my family. I could be out trying to enjoy a meal. I could be out trying not to be bothered. And a bitch is going to come up and be like, can you please do my hair? And they won't take no for a fucking answer. Like, no, bitch, I can't. I would, And I hate to result to that. Like, but that's the one that I hate getting asked. Like, I don't do hair no more, y'all. If I start doing hair, y'all gonna be the first motherfuckers to know I just don't do hair no more. Now, what's the most you've been offered to do hair since your retirement? Mm, 5000 And you turned that down? No, I did that shit. 
I did that one. I ain't go cap, baby. I'll pop out for a nice little check. Now, I did that shit. But that was on some, like, professional. That was on some professional type shit. But as far as um, getting offered, like, one girl just on some regular shit, one girl offered me a band. It's like, I think they were just bullshit. You know, they just be saying shit because they know I'm not going to fucking do it. They'll say anything. What about in the future if a celebrity uh, was to contact you to so do their hair? Celebrities be contacting me, you know, but they more so just be contacting me because I'm like funny as hell on the internet and I'm funny when I'm doing hair. So they just like want to vibe like, bitch, come do my hair, come do my hair. So I'll do it for content purposes, but they really don't care about the hair. They just be trying to link. They just be trying to have fun and record and shit. They don't be worried about their fucking baby or none of that. They be trying to talk. When it comes to questions, have people questioned your height? <laughs> oh, well, actually, when I do see people in person, they be like, you're so small. I thought you was in stuff. You talk so much big shit. I thought you was so big. You so little. And I hate when they say that shit because I'm like, bitch, this Glock I got is big as fuck. Like, don't come at me on some you're so small shit. I feel like you're trying to look girl me. I feel like you're trying to make me feel like a little weak ass or something. This ain't that. Care to share your height, though, for the record? I'm 5'4". Slim, thick. And when it comes to beauty, mm -hmm. how far have you gone for that as well? What you mean, like? As far as body enhancements, oh. cosmetic procedures. I got my, my boobs done because I was flat chested as fuck. Like, flat chested as fuck, fuck. Like, baby, I was built. Like, I was supposed to run track, play basketball. Like, I had an athletic ass body. And I got my teeth done because my teeth was real fucked up. But I feel like I always said I was going to get that growing up. No matter what the fuck I was, I could have been a garbage man, bitch. I was going to get these titties done. I was going to get my teeth fixed. Like, that's just something that I did for myself that I wanted. And does it get any specific than that like for example breast augmentation is that the correct right breast augmentation and i have veneers and does it get any more specific on the veneers like a type of veneer or i have resin veneers but i'm going to get my porcelain veneers i actually was supposed to go um like two weeks ago but i couldn't find my fucking passport which is crazy as shit so i guess that was guys telling me just sit down and just keep your teeth for a second but I'm going back to Columbia once I get my fucking passport. All right. Some more questions for you. Now, at this point in your life, mm -hmm. are you single? Yes, very single. And why are you single? I just um, can't tolerate bullshit. Like, it's just like if you're a fresh ass piece of fruit and you hang around a lot of rotten ass fruit, you're going to start getting rotten. And not saying people from my past relationships are rotten. It's just, it was making me turn crazy a little bit. It was making me a little bitter. So I'd rather just separate myself from a situation and focus on my peace rather than going back and forth and, you know, trying to fix something, trying to make something fit that, that it just ain't gonna fucking fit. And how long have you been single for at this point? I've been single since September. So I said I've been single going on four months. And what's that been like for you? Great, great. I trusted God and what he told me and I have been reaping all of the benefits from it. So I feel great. And just for context, you mentioned your age previously in another portion of questions, and it was 25. Yes, I'm 25 years young. Now, would you date you? Of course. I feel like I'm a fucking catch. Like, I feel like the person that I end up with, my husband, he's going to be a very, 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 very lucky guy. Cause I'm a very, I'm a giver. 
So I, when I'm really in love with you and I really feel like you're my person, like I'm gonna give everything to you so you can feel great, so you can feel like how you're supposed to feel. Now that was a hypothetical question, mm -hmm. but literally speaking now, when it comes to your past history of dating, oh shit, mm -hmm. what's the worst date you ever been on? Well, it was this. Oh shit, yeah, for sure. Okay, so it was this one time. I got two instances. One time I went on this date, we were supposed to go to the movies, but we didn't make the movie in time. So he took me out to um, a restaurant and he gets out his phone and he like, let's just watch the movie on our phone. I'm going to prop it up so we could be at the movies and on a date. Like it was real cute. I kind of was fucking with it. We was holding hands across the table and everything. Then why the fuck does my baby start calling him like 10 times in a fucking row while we're trying to watch the movie? And he's like shaking, like he's like, like, I don't know who that is. I think it said my little baby. My little baby. Called him about 10 motherfucking times. I said, baby, we can just wrap this up. You just go ahead and call him little baby. And then one time, I um had this dude pull up on me. I can't even remember where the fuck we were supposed to be going. But he pulled up on me in a bitch car. And then the whole time we was together, he was showing me pictures and videos of bitches that he used to talk to. Trying to get cool points. And like every video that he showed me, the bitch was like, stop recording me. Like every video it was given, he was a fucking stranger. So those two instances, I'm like, never the fuck again. Never the fuck again. Now, were either of those instances your first date with either of these people? Yes. Yes. It was my first date. Well, bo both of those was my first date. Both of those were my first date. And care to share what age you were at the time of either of them? I was still living with my mama. Um, I'm going to say I, I was... I'm going to say I was 20 with the, my little baby situation. 20 or 21. Yeah, 20 or 21. And then with the nigga pulling up in another bitch car, I think that was around that same age. Damn, they just kept playing around that age. I'm going to say I was 20. I was 20. I was 20. So that one was first, then the other one? Yes. Yes, that one was first. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, in your past history of dating, what's mm -hmm. the best date? you ever been on? Hmm. Well, this wasn't necessarily a date, but it was more so like an outing I had with a young gentleman and he took me to like four different places and we ended up going to the strip club. And he gave me like a whole bunch of money and it was like me and him on stage and it was like all these strippers on the floor. Damn, this sounds horrible. But it was really a bonding moment. And I was like, I wanna get on stage. He was like, you wanna get on stage? And we got on stage and it was like, he was holding me and shit. We was throwing money up and all the little stripper hoes was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And it was crazy. And that was like our fifth club of the motherfucking night. Anything I wanted in that bitch, I was getting. Then he had my security, he had people pull up at the front door, he had them block my parking spot out. Like, I was eating that shit up, I was eating that shit up, I was eating that shit up, yeah. That was a good night, that was a good night for sure. For sure, sure. Now, was that a first date as well? No, that wasn't a first date. That's technically not a date though, but it was like one of our links, like we linked up and he showed me a really, really good time. That was the first time though. Now, moving forward, who could you have had a relationship with, but it never happened? Yikes. Uh, next question. <laughs> but there is someone you have in mind for that. For sure, a couple. A couple, you know, they be on my body. Any regrets on that? Not wait, well, but wait, 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 hold up. In any of those situations of those people that are you think that you're thinking of, the reason why it didn't happen was that your call or theirs? Mine. It was this one nigga though. It was this one nigga that I should have just fought with. I should've just fought with him. I should just stuck with him. You feel me? But hey, it is what it is. It's always mine. I'm always the one that be walking away. I've never gotten broken up with. Well, this nigga did break up with me in the sixth grade. 
and he told me to fuck up with that shit. He broke my heart down. Like, never will I ever forget that motherfucking nigga. He's, and he's still trying to fuck with me to this day. To this day, he's trying to fuck with me. He circled that block, baby. To this day. But yeah, that's the only time a nigga ever broke up with me. And that middle school you attended back in those days, care to share what that was? Damn, you just trying to get specific as fuck so they know who the fuck it was. Nah, I ain't gonna tell you my middle school. I ain't gonna tell you my middle school. People get to looking up my yearbook and shit. I'm not doing it. What is your definition of viral? Uh, to me, my definition is a viral is like um, over like 500 comments, uh, maybe over like 5K likes or something like that. But, I mean, shit, people feel like as soon as you get a thousand likes or some shit, you viral. But for me, uh, yeah, if I get like over 500, a thousand comments, I feel like that shit went up. And is this a particular platform you're referencing here, or is this any All platform? platforms, any platform, any platform. Now, have you personally went viral according to this definition? Yeah, go viral once a fucking week. What's been your most viral moment up until this point? Mm, announcing my pregnancy. Announcing my pregnancy. Uh, or me giving birth. So, hand in hand. Has to do with my pregnancy, though, for sure. And what platforms? All my platforms went up. All of them went up when I announced my pregnancy. Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all of them went up. And then... I posted my labor and delivery on YouTube that went up, so all my platforms. And when you announced the pregnancy, you did that simultaneously on all platforms as well? Yes, so I announced on Halloween. So what we did was we had like a Halloween themed shoot and uh, you know, people just least expected, they did not expect me to be pregnant. I really kept that a secret, I really popped out. And you mentioned this in a previous portion of questions, but just for context for this, for those in the audience, once again, can you share the channel name on YouTube for those that want to see that particular video you just described? Uh, Queen Leora, Labor and Delivery. Just look that up and pop up. Now, are there any unknown facts or stories in regards to the pregnancy announcement, that labor video, so on and so forth? Uh, I mean, I hid my pregnancy for four months. Um, I don't think it's really no shit that they don't know. I don't think it's no shit that they don't know. Just curious in regards to either creating, filming, or posting it. No, it was a lot trying to film and post that shit and be real secretive because I was kind of sick. I was nauseous. I was like hungry all the fucking time. So if anything, I was just irritated as fuck trying to plan the behind the scenes. But no, everything ran smoothly. And anything else you want to mention in regards to either of those scenarios, that pregnancy announcement or the labor video? Mm -mm. No, I don't think so. It took me so long to post my motherfucking labor video. That shit was so emotional. But no, everything ran smoothly. Shit, my labor ran fucking smoothly. Everything. Any regret on when you made the announcement or how you made the announcement? No, I love the way I announced it. I feel like I did it perfectly. I did it in Queen Leroy style. I love me a photo shoot. Now, circumstances could be different for everyone. But can you give the audience five tips to go viral? Hmm, five tips. Okay, I'll say it has to do a lot with lighting, editing. Um, I'll say your opening scene, when you're capturing your audience, you have to make sure they stay engaged, so make it interesting. That's two. Three, I'm going to say, um, just because you like it, a lot of people might not like it. Or just because you don't like it, other people might. A lot of the videos that I don't fuck with, that I don't like, be the ones that go up the most. We are our hardest critics, so make sure you're doing, um, you're posting shit even if you don't want to. Consistency. And let's go with the uh, keeping your shit clean. Like a lot of people, y'all go viral and then you go back to like talking shit on Facebook or you go back to posting nonsense or you go back to um, doing things that can turn your fan base off. 
So I will say once you do go viral, try to stay on that path. Once you see that people like some shit, kind of stick with it and keep it going. Any additional tips? Shit, you either got it or you don't, for real, for real. It's either in you or it's not, really. Because a lot of people be like, can you coach me or can you do this and that? And yeah, you can lead, you can lead the horse to water, but you cannot make it drink. So it's either in you or it's not. Any, excuse me, any further explanation of any of these tips or no. anything else to going viral? Shit, no. Pick your topic. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. People, people love shit that they would never do. Like, they never have the pride to do. They never have the confidence to do. They love looking at shit like that. So, you know, do your big one each and every time. People going to tune in. Mm-hmm. Okay, now, how many kids do you have at this point? One. Have one son. And just for context, care to share their current age? My son is eight months old. He's just a little baby. Now, speaking of babies, Mm -hmm. bad baby a.k.a. Danielle Bregoli mm. is expecting her first as well. Mm-hmm. Gender currently unknown with LaVon. Mm-hmm. Now, circumstances could be different for everyone. Right. But if she's watching or listening to this interview, mm-hmm. anything you want to say to a first-time mother? Just take care of yourself. Enjoy your sleep, she. Now that you're pregnant, make sure you get every ounce of sleep that you can. Enjoy your last moments of being alone because you'll never fucking be alone again. So I say that. Just enjoy your last moments of being yourself because you're going to turn into a whole new person when you become a mom. Anything else in regards to a new mom? Mm, No, just enjoy yourself because everything is about to fucking change. And just for transparency, do you know her personally by any chance? No. Catch me outside here now. Now, what about baby names? For her? No, for you oh. and your son. Can you take the audience into that decision making? Well, um, he is a third. I always kind of knew if I had a son that I would let their father choose the direction of their name. Um, so we went with him being a third, just to go ahead and keep that tradition going, even though people don't think he's a third because they don't share the same middle name, but he has his father's name. And what's that really like, having a kid? That shit is unexplainable. Like, I used to watch so many people talk about having children, and it's nothing that nobody can prepare you for. It's nothing that nobody could fucking say. You're just gonna have to feel it. It's just like having shit. A many you attach to you. You always have something to worry about now. Somebody to worry about. Somebody to care for. It's a great feeling though. Being a mom, like you're a superwoman. It gives you a new level of confidence. Any plans for more kids? Of course, I want to have more children. But I, I really made a promise to myself seriously that I want to be married the next time that I do have children. Just for the simple fact of I don't like. Being a single mom ain't it. Even though I have a village, it's just, you know, you want to bring your child up in a family type of ordeal. You don't want want that bullshit. And how many do you want in the future if you could have it your way? If I could have it my way, I would have twins and um, maybe, so total maybe like four, four kids maybe, four or five, four or five. Twin boys, twin girls, one Ooh, of each? Uh, one of each. One of each or a twin, um, honestly, one of each, a girl and a boy. Now, how many public relationships have you been involved in so far? I'll say two. Um, my ex and my child's father. Well, no, I take that back. Shit, I was posting my um ex nigga too. I was like, oh, shit, I post all my niggas. Honestly, all my relationships been public. I ain't got shit to hide. But since I've been a little viral, I say like two. 
people be finding little old ass pictures and shit. Now, at this point in your life, are you done with public relationships? No, fuck no. I can't wait to pop back out. As soon as I get somebody to love me right, I'm, I'm outside with their ass. And what's your reasoning there? Because there's some people that have tried the public relationship thing and they never want to do it again. I feel like outside factors haven't affected my relationship public-wise. Like, you know, so nothing that I can post on the internet or nothing that me and my future man can do on the internet will break us up. So I'm not really worried about that in that sense. It's more so intimate and it's more so what goes on in our household that, that we need to work on. I ain't never give a fuck about being public. Now, circumstances could be different for everyone. Mm -hmm. But can you give the audience five tips on public relationships? Uh, I'll say um, make, sure, make sure the nigga really yours before you pop the fuck out with them, okay? Don't just think you like the nigga, oh, okay, we feeling each other, then you pop out and get your fucking feelings hurt, bitch, when somebody come up on there and dropping receipts. So make sure y'all really locked in before you pop out. Um, I say don't seek validation from the public when you do pop out. So don't pop out for a certain reason or because you want people to feel you or you know you want people to see you. Pop out because you really want to show love in that sense. You really want to show everybody who you love. Uh, let's see. Definitely don't read the motherfucking comments. You're going to have good comments. You're going to have bad comments no matter what you post. So that's irrelevant. Uh, and I'll say, damn, I need two more. If you got two more. And if not, that's okay, too. Shit. Don't be fucking dusty when you pop out. Shit. When you pop out, make sure you pop out with, with, some, with that shit on, okay? Because you got hoes hanging. But that's it. That's it.